Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. Today we're in Alvarado, Texas at Engineered Performance. I'm joined by Mitchell and Chris. And between us here is a Nissan RB26, and it's our Engine of the Week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pen Grade One, L Ring DOS Original, and NPW. Mitchell, great to see you. Absolutely. Chris, pleasure. Likewise. Thanks for having us in the shop today, guys. Absolutely. And uh, really cool to get a shop tour uh, earlier. And obviously, one of the engines you guys are, are basically done with here is this Nissan RB26. Yes, and, sir. Uh, it's an engine platform that you guys do a lot with. Um, so I'd love to know a little bit more about this one in particular, you know, sure. walk us through uh, why it was here at the shop and, and what all you guys did on it. Yeah, uh, client had this assembly, it was machined, I guess, at a few different machine shops and uh, he was given our information and, and contacted us and said, hey, I just, I sort of need someone to sort of fix this and piece it together. And I said, okay. And he brought everything by. I mean, he's ran good parts. He's got Carilla rods, CP pistons. Um, he did have the block fitted with dry liners from Darton. So, cause it was already overboard too much. Uh, so he went back to a factory 86 mil bore, uh, factory crank that's in there. Um, it does have a spline drive running with a Tomy oil pump. Okay. And then it has a least spec sump upgrade on it. We also did the final rebuild on the front final drive. We do a lot of those here in house. Um, it does have our billet main cap system in there. So it has a brace with billet main caps. We've also upgraded the factory M10 or M11 main studs to an M12. So we're putting a little more rigidity on the bottom end. Um, as far as uh, the cylinder head work is, it was previously ported by someone else. I don't remember who. It does have oversized valves from SuperTech and it does have Tomy camshafts. Um, it is running a high octane uh, cam sync and crank trigger system and it has an ATI damper that it goes in the front. Uh, recently, he did upgrade the turbochargers to a billet 2860 uh, unit that we have ceramic coated the hot sides and we went to an upgraded Tomy uh, twin turbo manifold set and outlet pipes. And then uh, one of the things that we try to do is get rid of all the factory plumbing because it's, it's a rat's nest. It's got 30 leak points because it's all banjo bolts. So oh, we, wow. yeah, so if you were trying to maintenance this, it becomes a complete nightmare. So what we've done is we've gone in and converted uh, all those banjo systems to AN fittings okay. and we custom make all our hard lines to suit that. And so we can get yeah. pictures of that if you want, but uh, that system's developed over there. He had his intake manifold polished and he did all this himself. I don't know who he did that with, but uh, okay. we just buttoned that up. But it's, uh, this is slated to make around 750, 800 okay. horsepower. Um, for a street car. Okay. So it should be pretty peppy on the street, I should say. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll kind of get the job done. So uh, and it does feature our head drain kit that's in the back that we have uh, uh, Daniel at, at Kiwi produce these for us. It's running that as well. And then um, pretty straightforward, nothing out of the norm, nothing uh, too crazy, but it's just uh, redone a little more streamlined, a little more efficient, so. yeah. And, and you guys did all the machine work in-house? We did, yeah. we did. We did all the boring and honing. We did all the main cap installation. Uh, the head was already done. All we had to do was just do a couple swap outs on some parts and then uh, put the head on, it was ready to go. Yeah. And so. Mitchell, you mentioned the coating on the turbo. Yep. Um, did you guys use coatings on any other parts in this? Build? We do. So we coated the turbine house, the turbo chargers. We also coated the pistons. It has the ceramic anodizing on the, on the piston as well as the crown coat and skirt coat. Uh, the main rod bearings are coated as well. Uh, so that'll help with uh, retaining oil there on the, on the bearings for the crankshaft. And um, it also has coated lifters. We did uh, coated lifters on this because a lot of the solid lifter applications, we have noticed a huge difference yeah. on how loud the engine is just in the valve train. And as soon as you put a coated lift in there, it's, it immediately softens the whole valve train system. So yeah, yeah. so it sounds a lot, a lot nicer and it's less intrusive because most mechanical valve trains, there is a degree of Okay, there's a little bit of noise there, but running something coated, it, it completely dampens that out quite a bit. So it does help. Yeah. So, uh, but we had fun building this one. It was uh, it's pretty cool. Cause there's a lot of parts that he had that didn't work that we ended up upgrading to make this thing a little more presentable. And um, I think he'll be happy with this when he's all done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, 
Now you mentioned the Tomei camshafts. Yeah. Uh, do you happen to know any of the type of spec? Um, uh, it that? should be, I think it's a 272 at 10.25 lift. Okay. So it was a basic drop in. It didn't require any load clearancing on that one, if I don't, if I recall. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got Supertech springs, valves. Uh, it's got the coated lifters on it. And then it's got the, the Tomei cams on there. Yeah. yeah. All right, and you mentioned uh, you should expect 750 to 800 horsepower um, and it's turbocharged. You know, how much boost do you think he's got to run to? to if he power? runs on a pump gas, I'd probably say he can run about 18 pounds and that'll put him in the 500 horsepower range or so. I think if he put a little race gas in there or he did eventually run E85, if he wanted to go, he could certainly hit those numbers. Yeah. 30 pounds of boost on this with the right tune and, and the right fuel, no problem. Yeah. No yeah, problem at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nope. Mitchell, anything else about the build or some of the components in this? Uh, not too much, man. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, a lot of things that we go through when we build these is with a lot of serviceability in mind. So all your old galley plugs are drilled and tapped and threaded so that if there's ever an issue we need to check something, we can simply just extract the plug, do an oil sample that way if you have to get in something or you can put a, a probe or a, a bore scope down the deal. So you can see a lot of things with that, with that aspect of it. But... Uh, I think the biggest thing is that when you upgrade to an upgraded sump, you've got to have an upgraded uh, pump on the system. And if you're gonna make a lot of horsepower on these, a spline drive is the way to go. The only spline drives we use are made from Supertech. They're based out of uh, England, uh, really good products. Um, sometimes hard to get, but we get them when we can and we yeah. do the right things with them. But um, yeah, I think for a, for a street engine, this is, this, this is probably a good, starter package for something that wants someone wants to make a good 500 600 to the wheel 800 at the crank uh this is a very very good start for someone that really wants to do something you don't have to get you know elaborate with the intake manifold and stuff like that you can certainly make that kind of power with the intake it'll be a little more boost pressure to do it so the parts will work a little harder but it can make the power yeah so yeah awesome well it's a gorgeous build uh like you guys always do and we appreciate you telling us a little bit about it absolutely mitchell thank Thanks, you sir. chris thank you thank you Guys, that's been this episode of Engine of the Week. Make sure you're checking out everything that Mitchell and Chris are doing here at Engineered Performance. And as always, make sure you're checking out enginebuildermag.com for more great engine content. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. Hey, while I've got you guys here, I wanted to tell you about Find a Builder. It's a new microsite on enginebuildermag.com that's great for both engine shops and for potential customers looking to get engine work done. If you're an engine builder, this site is a place where you guys can list your shop and what you guys do to potential customers through enginebuildermag.com. It's an easy subscription-based microsite that'll let you guys connect to a new audience. And if you're a potential customer looking to get engine work done, this is a source to help you guys find a shop that's in your area or one that specializes in the type of engine work that you're trying to get done. Make sure you guys are checking out Find a Builder on enginebuildermag.com. Thanks.